Before the start of this video, I would just like to say a huge thank you to all my supporters across all platforms. Without your support, videos like the one you're about to watch would never happen. So huge thanks to each and every one of you. When it comes to magic in Mithras, one of the most powerful casters has to be the Sorcerer. With a huge range of spells, they can attack, heal, teleport, and even live forever. Well, almost. But what makes them so powerful? And how does this group of casters adjust their spells? Well, in this video, I will be looking at the shaping system in Mithras. My name's Inwills, and welcome to the In Crowd. Hello and welcome back. You have stumbled across one of my short videos. In these videos, I share with you some aspect of the rule in a short video so that we can concentrate on understanding it quickly and getting it implemented into the game. Just like other casters in Mithras, sorcerers have two main skills, invocation and shaping. The first one is the skill that they roll when they are casting their spells to see whether or not it was successful or not. But the shaping skill allows them to change and adjust the spells they cast, even allowing them to cast two or more spells at the same time. More about that later on in the video. The shaping skill is never actually rolled in the game, but it provides the sorcerer some shaping points. To calculate how many shaping points the sorcerer has, you need to find one tenth of the shaping skill rounding up. So a sorcerer with a 56% shaping skill would have six shaping points at their disposal. So what can sorcerers use these shaping points for? Well, there are five aspects of the spell that a sorcerer can adjust. These are combined, how many spells you cast at the same time, the duration of the spell calculated by the, using the sorcerer's power characteristic, the magnitude of the spell, how difficult it is to dismiss it, the range, from touch till seven, several meters and the number of targets the spell can affect. Now, although magnitude is adjusted by shaping points, the intensity of the spell isn't. This is always one tenth of the sorcerer's invocation skill. Now, I made a video about the difference between intensity and magnitude and I'll link it somewhere for you. Now, there is a complete table of the adjustments that can be made uh, according to the number of shaping points on page 162 of the core rulebook. I'm not going to duplicate the whole table here, but as an example, let's take range and the number of targets. So if the sorcerer wants to extend the range beyond the default touch of a spell, they need to spend shaping points. By spending one shaping point, they can extend the range to their power multiplied by one meter. If they spend two shaping points, they can extend the range to their power multiplied by five meters. Now, in a similar way, the default spells only ever affect one target. However, by using a point of shaping, they can increase it to two targets. With two points of shaping, they can extend their spell to affect three targets. Hopefully, you are beginning to see how powerful shaping is and how it can really impact on the game. However, there is a catch. 
Sorcerers cannot go about just using shaping points without additional um, consequences. So when they use shaping points, uh, also adjust the time it takes to cast the spell and the number of magic points that is used. As default standards, all sorcerers spells take one turn to cast and use up one magic point. But for every aspect of this spell that is adjusted via shaping points, the number of turns for casting goes up by one and there is an additional magic point needed to cast the spell. So from the example above, if the sorcerer is adjusting the range and the number of targets the spell affects, then the spell would take three turns to cast one as default and one since they're in just the, adjusting the range and another one because they are adjusting the number of targets the spell affects. The same thing would happen with the number of magic points used. One because that is the default, then one for each aspect of the spell they have changed. Another one for range and another one for the number of targets. Now it's important to remember it doesn't matter how many shaping points are put into these different aspects. It is based solely on the aspect that they are changing. So if a sorcerer changes the number of targets the spell will affect, then it will give them one extra turn to cast and one extra magic point to fuel the spell. But if they change that from two targets to 10 targets, it would still just be one aspect of the spell that they are changing and so an additional one turn to cast and an additional one magic point to spend. With all of this, you might be itching to get your hands on a sorcerer to play in your campaign, but there is something else they can do with their shaping points they can combine and cast multiple spells simultaneously. But before we talk about that, please consider liking, commenting and subscribing to the channel. I produce regular videos about Mithras as well as actual play sessions, personal vlogs and videos about GMing in the series The Gibbering GM. So why not subscribe and press that bell button to get a notification when the next video goes live. Also, if you would like to provide some additional support, then the link to my Patreon account is in the comments down below. As well as the usual tiers and benefits, there are some that, are, that link specifically to role-playing games with benefits which allow you to see the world in which our campaign is written in and even my past adventure notes. I really appreciate all the support everyone provides and it moves me ever closer to my dream of becoming a full-time content creator. Anyway, Back to shaping. Okay, so the next part of shaping can get a bit complicated, but once you get your head around it, it you it will allow you as a GM controlling an NPC sorcerer or um, a player character sorcerer able to cast combined spells with a flick of your wrist. Okay, if you want to check out the restrictions for combining spells, then there is a bulleted list on page 162 of the core rulebook. So, for one shaping point, the sorcerer can combine two spells together. These have to be different spells. You can't stack two racks in one cast. As an example, let's take Cyrus, the Red Order Sorcerer from our current campaign. He will be casting two of his defences spells, Spell Resistance and Damage Resistance, on two of the party members. So the first advantage of casting multiple spells at the same time is that you only need to spend your shaping points for the first spell. All the 
other spells share the aspects of the first spell that has been changed. So, Cyrus would use one shaping point to extend the reign of, range of his spells and one to change the number of targets up to two. He then needs to use another shaping point because he is combining two spells together, giving a total number of shaping points used of three. Now, if he was to cast these two spells separately, it would be two shaping points each, making a total of four. So you can see by combining the spells, we've got a reduction in shaping points. Now, the number of turns that it would take to cast these two spells at the same time would be one, the default amount, plus three, now, B, this three are the three aspects of the spell that Cyrus is changing. So the first one would be the number of spells. He's casting two. The range, so he doesn't need to touch people. And the number of targets, taking it from one to two. So that would be three plus the one default, which would give a casting time of four turns. Now, casting these two spells separately would take three turns each. So making six turns altogether. So by combining them, we are using less shaping points and getting both spells out a lot quicker. OK, next is the number of magic points needed. This would be the default of one plus three for each of the aspect that is being altered. The same as casting one spell. Uh, plus, because there are two spells being cast, there will be an additional one magic point. OK, so this would give a total of five magic points needed. One for the default, three for the different aspects that have been changing. And because we're casting two spells at the same time, another one. OK, so casting all together would take five magic points. Casting these separately would take three points each, making a total of six. Now, although the cost is slightly lower than casting those spells individually, the sorcerer casts both spells with a single invocation roll. Now, of course, this could fail or be successful, but because we are combining multiple spells, it's harder. And so the difficult grade that would normally would be standard increases by one. So normally it would be a hard roll. Now, if you would like to see more about the difficulty grades within Mithras, then I'll, yeah, I'll link a, a video somewhere around here. Because there's only one role for the invocation, it does mean that there's only one role that needs to succeed. Or, for example, you know, luck points can be used to ensure that it actually takes place. OK, so there's one last aspect of combining spells, and that's the defending target. <clears throat> Obviously, in this case, it's... Um, defensive magic but if we were casting it to affect targets <coughs> excuse me then three two one so one last aspect of combining spells is that the defending target or targets only get one resistance roll this will be compared to both spells and the target may resist if they succeed with either, say, willpower or evade. So rather than making a willpower check or an evade check, they will roll 1d100 and compare it to the two resists. So it is possible from that one roll that the target resists one spell but gets hit by the second but they're still only getting one resistant roll. 
I hope that all made sense to you. Well done for getting right to the end of the video. Do go back and replay me if needed. And don't forget that there's a full explanation of all this in the core rulebook. With shaping points and the ability to combine spells together, sorcerers are masters of the manipulation of magic. It also makes them more involved to play and allows you to really test the limits of spell casting. I'm looking forward to a future adventure when my NPC um, sorcerer will cast Rack on every player um, character um, in the party simultaneously. Better get ready with your dismissed magic Bartleby. So until next time, I hope all your opposed roles are successful and reward you with a well-deserved special. Happy Mithrasing everyone. See ya. Bye.